right, so solving trig equations is pretty much the same as any other equation. We need to rearrange, but we need to recognize that a lot of the times there's going to be two or more solutions. So if we're looking at this one, and now I'm going to be looking in radian measure this time, okay? Because we talked about radians before, okay? So the one important thing is we need to make sure our calculator is in radians. All right, so the first step here. We're going to be doing cos x, and I'm going to move the 2 to the other side, and then I'm going to divide by 3. Okay, so now we need to think back. So we've got cos x is equal to all of that. So cos is going to be negative in which quadrants? So we're going to use our cast rule. We know cos is negative in 2 and 3. We're going to find our related acute angle by doing the cos inverse of the positive of 2 over 3. Okay, and I'm using radians. Okay, so I'm going to do 2 divided by 3, and then I'm going to do the cos inverse of that, and I get 0.84. Now, this is a little bit different from what we we're used to because before we would have a degree here, but we're going to do the same process. I'm going to go through this a little slower. So in quadrant two, okay, so normally we know that this whole angle here is 180. But we said that 180 was the same as pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that x is equal to pi minus 0.84. Now, pi minus 0.84 is going to give us 2.3. Okay, it's 2.3005, a whole bunch of decimals. We'll leave it as 2. Point, we'll go 2.30. Okay, if we're in quadrant 3, okay, rather than doing 180 plus, we're going to have x equals pi plus 0.84. Okay, all I've done is changed what we have for our um, related acute angle to radians, and then I'm using pi instead of 180, and I would use 2 pi instead of 360. So if we have pi plus 0.84, we're going to get 3.98. Okay, so we're trying to get used to using radians here. Okay, it's not that much different, it's just a different measure. It's like going feet and meters. Okay, let's try the second question. So if we look at the second question, or again, we're in radians. This is a question that gets a lot of people. So first thing we need to do is we need to put everything on one side. We can't just divide out those coses because we end up losing some solutions. And I'll show you what I mean. So in this step, we're going to have 2 sine x cos x minus cos x equals zero, okay? So two, I've subtracted the cos x over to the other side, and then I just put all of them on the left because it just aesthetically looks nicer. Now, there's an x there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to factor out a cos x, okay? So cos x factors out there. So this becomes 2 sine x minus 1. And this all equals 0. So now what we have to do is we have to find out if we have cos x equals 0 or 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to have actually more solutions here. So cos x equals 0. So if we put in cos x equals 0, if we took the inverse cos of 0, you get half of pi. Okay, you get pi by 2. So what that actually means is that on here, or right there, cos x equals 0. We're actually right here as well, cos x equals 0. If you go back to your unit circle, Cos x equals 0 when x equals 0. Okay, so when x equals 0, cos x equals 0. 
Now, when, so x, or cos is actually your x values. So when your x values are zero, that's when cos x equals zero. So here, x equals pi by two, or x equals three pi by two. Now, if I said cos x equals one, well, that happens when x equals one at zero and two pi. If I said cos x equals negative one, that happens when x equals negative one. It happens at, or sorry, pi or some multiple of that. All right. Now, if I said sine x, just for argument's sake, and to show you, if I said sine x equals zero, that happens when y is equal to zero, the y values. So sine x, now this isn't part of the question, but I just want to show you, equals zero. That happens when x is equal to zero, when it's equal to pi, or when it's equal to two pi. So there's actually three solutions for that one. It's a little bit harder and a lot of people struggle with it. That's why the unit circle is kind of better to memorize. The unit circle has a few more tricks to it and it helps you out a little bit more. All right. So forgetting about all of this red because it's not part of the question. All right, so going back. Now we're on the other side. So we have sine x equals one half. Now sine x equals one half is gonna happen in quadrants one and two from our cast rule. Now we need to think about our unit circle. Because when does sine x equal one half? Well, if we're thinking about a unit circle, you might not remember it, but what if we're looking at our special triangles? We've got one, one, root two, and that's our 45 degrees or pi by four. Then we've got our one, two, root three, and this is normally 30 degrees up here, but it's pi by six now. That makes this pi by three, because it's 60 degrees, okay? The unit circles are something you should memorize. You should know them. But when we're looking at this, we now have sine one half. So that's one over two. So that means my related acute angle is pi by six, okay? It's from this triangle this angle, one over root two, or sorry, one over two. So then what that tells me is that in quadrant one, x just equals pi by six, and that's an exact answer. In quadrant two, x equals pi minus pi by six. Well, this is six pi over six. I just multiplied the top and bottom by six minus pi by six, and that equals five pi over six. I've subtracted one of those six pi's away. Okay, I just made a common denominator and subtracted. So my solutions are pi over two, three pi over two, pi over six, and five pi over six. There's actually four solutions to that one question. And if you factored out those coses right at the start, you'd be missing all of these solutions. All right, last one. Now this one's a little bit harder because we have um, an actual factor here and we've got a little bit of work to do. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to sine x. Okay, so now when we factor this, We're going to have 3 sine x and a 3 here. And that's going to be negative. So that means this is 3 sine x plus 1 and then 2 sine x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, this was a hard trinomial. Now what I did, and I'm going to just show you really quickly, is what I did in my head is I treated this as something like this. 6a squared minus 7a minus three equals zero. And then I factored that, three a plus one and two a minus three. 
and then my a's were just sine x's, okay? So now we're gonna have again some more solutions. So first we've got sine x equals negative one over three. Now that looks like it would be a special triangle, but it's not. So what we can do is just work through C, A, S, T. We're negative sign, so we're in quadrants three and four. Our related acute angle is equal to the sine inverse of one over three. I take the positive value, sine inverse it. So a third, and we're gonna have point, we'll call it point zero four zero zero because it's point three three nine so we'll just round up so then in quadrant three we're gonna have what are we dealing with x x equals pi because that's 180 plus 0 0.4 and pi plus 0 0.4 or pi plus that angle i left the number in my calculator um we're gonna get 3.48, okay? Now in quadrant four, we're gonna have two pi, because we have to go all the way around, minus 0.4. And that's gonna give us 5.9. Okay, and we don't have to put any unit because if we don't put a unit, it's assumed it's in radians. Okay, now the other side, this is actually nice and easy because we get sine x equals 3 over 2, and that's not admissible. Okay, the reason that that's not admissible is because this 3 can't be bigger than this 2. You can't have the opposite side of a triangle bigger than the hypotenuse. Okay, so then that works, doesn't work. So then our only two solutions are right here. And there's some questions to work on.